The Backyard Naturalists podcast is presented by Backyard Birds in Matthews, North Carolina. Backyard Birds offers a unique in-store shopping experience, highlighting the joy and excitement of attracting wildlife with the finest quality seed and the best quality bird feeders, bird houses, bird baths, and more. Bringing people of all ages together with nature and wildlife, Backyard Birds has everything you need to create your own backyard natural habitat. Connect with Backyard Birds at thebirdfoodstore.com or on social media. Now, here's Debbie and Laurie, the Backyard Naturalists. Welcome to the Backyard Naturalist, the podcast about anything and everything related to nature. We appreciate you joining us for this episode and all episodes. We hope that you like, follow, share, and talk up our podcast to people around you in your environment. You may remember a previous episode about Crown Town Compost. It was a very unique idea on cutting down food waste that goes into the landfill by having a subscription program for people to collect their food waste at their home and then Crown Town Compost picks it up. Ironically, they started doing this originally on a bicycle, which I thought was quite an image. And it's been a successful project and they're continuing to look at how they can improve this in order to give us all the environmental benefits that come out of keeping food waste out of the the landfills. When we were talking to David Valder, who was the person, one of the co-owners of Crown Town Compost, he referenced a sister company that they had called Crown Town Landscapes and said, you might want to look at this. So I did, and I thought, you know what? This would make a really good topic for the show as well. We have with us today Eric Thays from Crown Town Landscapes. And I want to point out, because if I don't, Chris will... We are not receiving any money for this episode. This is something that fits our, our uh, what, what do I want to say? Yeah. Our standards. Our <laughs> about nature. Anything, there we go. It anything is about nature. nature. Yeah, absolutely. Because they're improving on nature. They're not doing any damage to nature. It's a whole different take on landscaping. From their Facebook page, they mentioned that they provide lawn care and landscaping services that feature... This is what makes them unique, all electric, quiet equipment, chemical free care, and near and dear to our hearts, a focus on native productive plant species when you're ready to move beyond grass. Eric, welcome to the Backyard Naturalist podcast. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. You are very welcome. Tell us a little bit about your background. So I am um, a co-owner of sort of the Crown Town group as well with David, and uh, we have two other owners as well. Uh, my background is actually in finance and accounting, and I spent seven years out of college doing that. What was your motivation in creating this, um, I guess, outside-of-the-box idea of landscaping for your landscaping company? You know, it, 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 it really started in the pandemic. Um, in 2020, you know, that was our first year with the landscape company and what we, what we thought we would do is, you know, make a small run of raised garden beds built out of cedar um, and just sort of offer them up to our existing customers. People were stuck at home. They wanted to be outside. They wanted to do something. Um, And so we sold out of that first run and that was kind of our first taste into it. We built them ourselves, used some of the compost we had produced, um, Drop them off, install them, and while we were talking with our customers, you know, kind of seeing the excitement on their face, they started asking us, "Hey, do you have an idea for this space?" Or, "Man, my lawn looks terrible. Is that something you could help me with?" Um, our other partner, Charlie, he had a lawn care uh, and landscape company up in the mountains uh, for 14 years, and so he. He was working with us on the compost side, running the route at the time. Um, And so he brought sort of the lawn care experience. uh, And then I was able to bring the landscape uh, side of things. And so, you know, we thought we're already doing this, this composting um, program, trying to keep food waste out of the landfill, you know, trying to reuse that, trying to bring compost back to the soil. Um, You know, how can we sort of do our landscape business in the same mindset? Um, With the same values. Same values, exactly, yep. And long story short, a college buddy is um, 
the sales director for Greenworks. Uh, Greenworks has a, a homeowner and a professional and a commercial line, all electric equipment. So I reached out to him um, to see if they had products available. And sure enough, they had mowers and blowers and all the kind of tools you need to get started. And um, he set us up with some samples to get started. And we basically pulled the trigger on our first mower when we had our, our first account. <laughs> wow. And, uh, and then it was sort of, let's, let's go get some more. And it really hasn't stopped him. So you're affecting air pollution and noise pollution by using this electric equipment. Yeah, it's pretty cool stuff. Um, a lot of people aren't aware, you know, unless you're mowing your lawn yourself. I mean, you, you've certainly seen an increase in those products in Home Depot and Lowe's and six hardware stores like that. Um, but there's really not a lot of um, landscape groups in North Carolina offering this product. I think we're one of two uh, oh. that I'm aware of. As you go to California, you know, it's becoming quite a bit more popular. I think they just passed legislation um, eliminating two-stroke engines in a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, our, our customers love it. It's, it's a pretty um, big selling point when we go to new customers who, you know, heard of us, but, but don't really know what we're about, um, mm-hmm. maybe entirely. And, and to say that, you know, you're working from home more and more, we're not going to be using a big, loud backpack blower on your back porch. It'll, you really won't even know we're there. Um, it's kind of made getting into these homes a little easier. Well, we were thrilled to hear your emphasis about using native plants. We've had Lisa Tompkins, who was the, gosh, president of the Charlotte chapter of the North Carolina Native Plant Society for quite a few years. She's been on the show twice. We had Dr. Carrie DiGiacco talking about native plants and invasive plants, which is a huge problem in our area. So you are speaking our language when you start talking about using native plants. And productive plants. So what are, what are some of those that you use, some of the plant species? Kind of how we approach it is we're working with our homeowners. One, we want to eliminate as much lawn in Charlotte as we can. We understand understand that lawns are very near and dear to some people, and we want to respect that. And so we we will create a landscape plan around their desire for a lawn. But we're really focused on taking out a corner or expanding the beds and putting in food that one they or their children can eat from. They can grow some annuals from. And there's like long perennial crops like fruit trees and blueberry bushes and things that really require um, not so much maintenance, um, but they're able to sort of see some physical benefits from. I teach a lot of creating wildlife habitat classes, and we talk about grass as being the largest non-native crop in the United States, that it doesn't serve any purpose for any type of wildlife. And I encourage people to think about it as the frame rather than the picture. It doesn't need to be the whole picture. Just make little beds, like you said, and then plant around it. Plant mindfully around it. Use native plants instead of invasive plants. And I like your phrase, productive plant species, because I think that kind of says it all once you start to analyze that and realize we can, we can provide food for ourselves and we can provide food for other species as well. And if, if you want the lawn, that's totally fine. And we can find a solution to maintain that ecologically. And so some things that we've done is, um, you know, if the situation is right, we'll install a no-mo lawn. So this is a fine fescue lawn. It does okay with shade, low traffic, um, and it only needs to be cut two or three times a year. And so you can cut that with a battery-powered mower. You know, it grows nice and tall, so it's protecting the soil surface, keeping, you know, moisture, kind of retaining moisture a little easier. Another thing that we're doing is we're taking the compost, the food waste, from Crown Town Compost. We're obviously turning that into compost, and then we're amending it um, with some organic amendments um, to create a top dressing program. So, you know, that, that goes on generally in the fall when you aerate and overseed you know, and our goal here is to educate people that you don't need to aerate every year. You don't need to overseed every year. The seeds are in there. The seed bank is, the seed bank is huge. We just need to provide the optimal conditions for those seeds to germinate 
and grow. So we do that through soil testing. Let's determine what the pH is in the soil, how much organic matter is in the soil, and then we'll build a program around that. And I will say traditional lawn care companies tend to do all of those things on an annual basis without testing. So you may be over um, liming the, the grass, for example. Correct. Over or under. I mean, we're, we're seeing quite a few lawns that are sitting in the eight nines um, that, you know, we need to create a lime program over the next eight months because you can only apply a certain amount. You know, you can't apply a hundred pounds of lime per thousand square feet in one session. It needs to be, you know, around 25 pounds is kind of the max that you want to put down. We're going to ask you a very personal question now. What (laughs) What does your yard look like? Oh, my yard. My yard is, um, always in flux. Uh, as you can imagine, we have, I I do have a a four year old and another one on the way. So we like to play soccer in our yard, but a majority of the yard is gardens, perennial foods. Uh, we're putting in a, um, we have a lot right next to us. It's about a quarter acre. It's owned by the city, but we're responsible for it. So we actually just had a goat on that for (laughs) four weeks cleaning it out and he did a great job. And now we're putting in a perennial food forest for the neighborhood. So there'll be 10 to 15 fruit trees in there, really dense, a lot of understory uh, bushes and and, uh, ground cover. It's really about getting us outside, having food year round, and then letting my son um, experience it. So he knows where the raspberries are. He knows where the carrots are in the garden. And when he's hungry, it's pretty cool. He'll just come outside and grab some food from the garden. That is um, cool. And there's no risk to him. He's not going to be poisoned from chemicals on his food. Totally. He gets home and he kicks his shoes off and he's barefoot the rest of the day. Perfect. Tell people how they can contact you if they've, they're interested or if they have questions for you. Yeah, so you can just go to our website, crowntownlandscapes.com. There's some information on us, our team, who we are, what we do. Uh, and then there's a a link to submit a request for your property. That comes directly to me, and we'll reach out in a couple of days to uh, schedule a consultation. Great. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. You've been listening to the Backyard Naturalist podcast, where today we've talked to Eric Thays from Crown Town Landscapes about limiting your grass, using a uh, chemical-free products, all electric products, and making a productive plant list, which is a new term, I think. Let's let's put some plants in that we can eat and other things can eat as well. You've been listening to the Backyard Naturalist. I'm Debbie. And I'm Laurie. We're the Backyard Naturalist and we're signing off. While recording the Backyard Naturalist podcast, Debbie and Laurie enjoy coffee provided by the Good Cup Coffee Company in Matthews, North Carolina. Follow Good Cup Coffee on Instagram and look for them at the Matthews Community Farmers Market this Saturday morning.